Hello everyone, my name is Zach and you're watching another Bite Size Build video. Today I'm going to show you how I built this giant Arduino board that I'm calling the Arduino Giga. If you're not familiar with the Arduino board, it's usually this size. An Arduino board is a small microcontroller that many makers and artists and engineers use to prototype ideas. There are a million different little sensors and components and modules that you can connect to the Arduino board. You write code on your computer and then upload that code to the Arduino board and then it interacts with those components. If you've seen my other videos, you'll know that I use Arduinos in many of my projects. I thought it would be really fun to build a gigantic Arduino board, so that's what I've done here. So here's the plan for this project. Since the Arduino Uno is an open source project, that means all of the source files or design files to make it are available for download. That means that I was able to download a 3D model of the Arduino Uno and scale it up in my software. I plan on making this a working 12x scale model. The first piece I'm going to make is the circuit board or that flat piece at the bottom. Now when I scaled it up by 12 times, it actually came out to be really close to 3 quarters of an inch, which is perfect because I have a lot of 3 quarter inch plywood that I'm going to use for this project. Once I'm done making the circuit board, I'll be able to 3D print all of the connectors and headers and all the different components that go on the board. And finally, I'm going to install an actual Arduino board recessed in the back of the plywood so that I can run wires to all the different parts and make this an actual working Arduino board. I'm going to be using the Inventables X-Carve to cut out the outline as well as all of the lettering. If you're interested in learning more about the X-Carve, I'll have a link in the description for you to check out. At this point you saw me cut out the circuit board on the CNC and I started painting all of the little white lettering. Now I ran into a bit of a problem. I didn't recess the lettering back far enough. So when I painted all of the white lettering and then followed that with a coat of blue paint, that blue paint kind of splotched into the white lettering and it looks terrible. So my first reaction was maybe I just need to start over and cut out a new one. But after thinking about it for a little bit, all I need to do is fix that lettering and I think I've come up with a clever solution for that. I've regenerated these tool paths to cut those letters much deeper. If I threw the work piece right back onto the CNC, I could probably get the alignment close, but it definitely wouldn't be exact. So in order to make sure everything lines up, I'm going to establish a new origin for this tool path. I will start by drilling two holes in the wasteboard of the CNC machine and put these little wooden dowels in there. Then to make sure that the plywood lines up with those dowels, I've 3D printed these little black plugs that slide into these giant holes. These little black plugs have a hole in them that will line up with the dowel pin. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but it's worth a shot. And if it doesn't work, I'm just going to end up cutting a new one. So it appears that my efforts in cutting out the circuit board again were successful, which I'm really happy about. So the next step will be scaling up all the other components and I'll probably be 3D printing those. Looking at the model here, some of these components have lots of little pins and stuff attached to them and all of those are separate bodies. So it's going to take quite a bit of work to combine certain bodies together to make it easier to 3D print. It's looking like I'm going to have a lot of 3D printing ahead of me. Next I'm going to work on designing the little female headers that go around the perimeter of the board. These are the parts that allow you to plug in little jumper wires like this and connect to external components. As I said, I'm going to be making this a working Arduino board. So when I scaled this up by 12 times, I had to figure out what kind of connector to use to mimic the jumper wire going into that female header. And I figured out that the quarter inch audio jack is the perfect size for this application. So I had to modify the 3D model of that female header to accept the threads of this female audio jack. And the result is this. 
Look how awesome that is. These things are huge. So I'll be able to insert a quarter inch audio jack into each one of these holes. Now the problem is how to insert these because it's really far up in there and there's no good way to hold on to that. So I actually designed and printed a custom tool that inserts these and allows me to reach up in there and screw those in. So next I'm going to solder a wire to a bunch of these little quarter inch jacks. That wire will feed down through the board and then connect to the Arduino that is hidden underneath the board. Okay, that was quite a bit of effort, and I wish I could find an interesting way to show you all the effort that goes into 3D printing, but I just haven't found a visually exciting way to show you that. But just know that my 3D printer was running for about a week and a half nonstop. I'll go ahead and give my 3D printer a rest for a while. It deserves a break. So the next step is to install all of these 3D printed components onto the circuit board. My 3D printer doesn't have a dual extruder, which would have allowed me to print in two different colors. So I opted to take the parts that were mostly black and just print those in black PLA and then hand paint the rest using acrylic paint. And so I got the help of my cousin Drew and his wife Belen to help with that task. On a quick side note, both of them are very talented musicians and artists, and they both work in music theater in New York City, which has been a particularly hard hit industry due to the pandemic. They've had to be really creative to find other ways to make a living. If you're interested in checking out some of their work, I'll have a link in the description.
This portion of the video is sponsored by Altium. Altium Designer is a professional PCB design environment. Like I said earlier, the Arduino Uno is an open source design. That means you can go and download the design files and if you wanted to make your own PCB, you're allowed to do that and you could use something like Altium Designer to do that. They have a really cool feature called the Import Wizard, which I'm gonna use right now to import the design files that I just downloaded. So I have Altium Designer opened up, I go to File and I click on Import Wizard. I know that these files were made using Eagle, so I'm gonna select that and I'm gonna click Next then it's going to ask me to add the files that I want to convert. So I'm going to click the add button and add the two files. It's a board file, which is the board layout and a schematic file. I click open and then I click next. Now it's going to analyze the files that I brought in and then it tells me that all of the layers on the board file are mapped correctly, which is really cool. There are several options here that you can set, but I'm going to leave all of them as the default and I'm going to click next. Now it's bringing that schematic file and the board layout file into Altium Designer. And that's all there is to it. It's done. I click finish. And now you can see that I have the board layout file as well as my schematic. If you're ready to take your PCB design to the next level, there'll be a link in the description where you can download a free trial of Altium Designer. When you do that, you're getting access to a really cool piece of software, but you're also helping out Size, so I really appreciate it. Now that I'm done building the giant Arduino board, I thought it would be fun to do a Christmas theme project because after all, it's Christmas time right now. I'm gonna bring this thing inside into my living room and set it up next to my Christmas tree. I've already installed some individually addressable RGB LEDs on my Christmas tree. These are the same LEDs that I used in my Stranger Things message wall. So the plan is to hook this giant Arduino board up to the Christmas tree and have it control the LEDs. These LED strips have three wires that I need to connect up to the Arduino. Five volts, ground, and data. I actually have the LED strips plugged into a five volt adapter in the wall and that will actually power up the Arduino as well as the string of lights. I made this cable that will plug into the LED strips and I put the quarter inch plugs on the other side that will plug into the Arduino. So I need five volts, ground, and then I'll be using GPIO pin two for the data line. So I'll need to connect it to the computer using this hidden USB cable here. Okay, so I've written some quick little test code here that you'll see that the uh, power LED, this red one is on all the time, anytime the power is applied. And then I've got three other LEDs. One is on the RX, one is on the TX, and one is the built-in LED pin 13 on the typical Arduino Uno board. And so I've got those all blinking just to kind of test out making sure all my wiring's working. I also have the reset button over here. So when I press this button, the code will reset and you'll see those lights start blinking over again. To write the rest of the code, I'm going to install a library called FastLED that is designed for these type of RGB LEDs. I'm just going to use one of the built-in examples to show you how it works. I've got the code uploaded onto the Arduino and here it is running on the Christmas tree. I've been wanting to do this project for a long time. In fact, I've got several other giant size projects that would go perfectly with this Arduino board. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments. One of those ideas is to make like a giant LED and a resistor that I can plug into the Arduino board. Let me know if you think that might be interesting to watch. If I get enough interest in this, I might make a smaller version of this and sell it as a kit on my website. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely let me know. I really had a fun time making this Arduino board. If you want to support projects like this, a great way to do that is to become a Bite Size supporting member. You can do that by visiting patreon.com forward slash Bite Size or click the join button below. Not only is this a great way for you to support the channel and projects like this, but it's also an awesome way for me to connect with you on a more personal level. You'll get access to behind the scenes content, early release videos, and monthly hangouts. If you're new to Bite Size, you may not know that I make a lot of other cool project videos like this, so I'll go ahead and post a couple of those here at the end for you to watch. You might also consider subscribing to Bite Size, that way you can keep up to date with all the cool project videos that I'm working on. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach, and I'll see you next time. So when I painted all of the white lettering and then added that blue paint of coat, coat paint of coat, that doesn't even make sense. Ugh, crap.